And we're back with a little tutorial on food poisoning germs. Food poisoning germs, not that lethal, but they can be annoying if they get on your food and your duplicates keep getting sick. So a few handy tips to just avoid it happening. Uh, first off, when your duplicates come out of a laboratory, they're going to have germs on them. That's why these sinks are here. And that's why you always have this unidirectional thing where they go in past the sinks and then come out past them. Or they come in past the toilets and then leave past the sinks, whichever direction you choose. But that's usually not what gets you. Everyone gets that one right. What usually gets you is the polluted dirt. Uh, when you first start it, you're going to be using outhouses, and outhouses kick out polluted dirt full of germs. And you're going to feel this very, very strong urge to put down a compost heap. And you're going to want to put down that compost heap, and that compost heap is going to recycle that polluted dirt into clean dirt. Well, technically. The dirt that comes out of it is not clean. The dirt that comes out of it is, well, germy clean dirt. This here is Optimus Dupe, and on their back they've got a big lump of polluted dirt covered in germs. Uh, because of that, they are now covered in germs themselves. They have surface germs on them, food poisoning germs. Now, you should observe here, when they run past the sink, they're going to wash all those germs off. Oh, wait a minute, there was too many germs in just one sitting. These sinks will only remove 100,000 germs per hit, so if there's too many germs on the dirt they're carrying, well, tough if they've only got one sink in the way. And they're going to come down here and they're going to drop it off in the compost. Now watch surface germs again. Oh look, they've got surface germs again. When duplicates pick up something that's covered in germs, it doses them with germs. And then when they drop off something covered in germs, it doses them with germs a second time. They get hit twice every time. So, that is why this door has been put one way. Oh, please tell me you didn't get germs as well. Yeah, no, they got germs on them too because they've wanted to and started fiddling around with things. Uh, you also see that Optimus Dupe here, they're playing around with the uh, compost, also hits him with germs. And now they all have to run past the sinks and sometimes stop twice to wash up because that's how badly they got dosed. Do not bother with the compost. I know that sounds like crazy talk, but my advice, deconstruct your compost. Don't use it. And in fact, don't even build one. You don't want one. Put down a storage bin. Get it to store polluted dirt. You can worry about composting later. Usually early on in the game you don't need the dirt. So any dirt that's coming out of these outhouses, you don't care about it. Just uh, stick it into a storage bin, pop a deodorizer right beside it, and any polluted oxygen that off-gasses all it will get converted to clean oxygen. Food poisoning germs in the air do nothing. So you'll notice in here there's lots of oxygen with food poisoning germs. Does nothing. No one cares. Doesn't bother anyone. So deodorizer by a storage bin and that's your problem solved. Now... Another thing as well, don't start using, you can start using composts, but I wouldn't start using them until after you cycle yourself away from mealwood. Uh, the reason being mealwood requires dirt, and if you start, well, if you start composting your polluted dirt, what will happen is your dupes will compost the polluted dirt, and then your mealwood plants will call out for dirt. Your duplicates will pick up the dirt by the compost, which is covered in germs, getting themselves dosed with germs, run past the sinks, clean themselves off, get to the plants, drop the polluted dirt covered in germs off at the plants and when they do they'll dose themselves again with germs and at that point they're outside of here they're outside past the sinks and that second dosage of germs is going to stick with them when they go back to get some food or even worse they pick up food in the farming area and bring it back to uh, your storage area contaminating your food with germs just don't bother with the compost at least for the first few hundred cycles don't even think about it once you're off mealwood maybe go for them then but even then i held out on this one until i had uh, poke shells and just you can get rid of them with poke shells. So let's just go with a, a quick way you can get around to, usually by mid to late game, that's a quick way to dispose of any polluted dirt germs. Now, if you'll pardon my debug, this is a very simple and brute force solution to the problem. What we have outside here is a storage bin full of sand. What we have inside is a water sieve and the auto sweeper. All that's happening is this poke shell will consume the polluted dirt that comes out of the water sieve and yeah, we're not even grooming it. It, will, it has high enough uh, consumption capacity to be able to keep up with production. At the same time, this auto sweeper here can stock up sand from this storage container into this water sieve, meaning our dupes never need to come in here. Eventually, this poke shell will drop an egg, and when it does, it'll become aggressive, and we don't want our dupes anywhere near it. So because the auto sweeper is here, it can sweep sand from here into this water sieve, which means our dupes can stock up the storage bin from outside of this area, meaning they never come in contact with the poke shell, all our polluted dirt is consumed by the, poke, by the poke shell, and we don't have to worry about germs getting out at all. Just a very simple way to take care of germs. The only other way your dupes are going to get food poisoning germs into them, well, one of the other ways, is through food. Now, there's three foods here that can contaminate your dupes with food poisoning germs. For example, tofu and lice loaf require water to be produced out of the micromusher. 
And if you take water that has food poisoning germs in it and use that to make the food, well, if your dupes make do it, they're all going to auto do it automatically, remember, then that food will have food poisoning germs on it. Uh, tofu is not really a risk because no one makes that stuff. It's still pretty terrible right now in terms of uh, resource effectiveness. And lice loaf is also not really a risk because no one makes lice loaf. It's just cheaper to make more meal mealwood. Uh, if you just plant more mealwood plants and eat it raw, it, it just costs you dirt. Whereas if you start adding in water, water is usually a very expensive and rare resource, especially early on when you will be using mealwood. It's just cheaper to spend dirt on the mealwood than it is to waste water on it. So those two are not really going to give you food poisoning germs much, to be honest, anyway. Which leaves you with mush bars. Mush bars are made with water and dirt. They're your emergency food supply. You can turn dirt into water. It's very inefficient. Dirt and water into food, it's very inefficient. But they automatically, by default, come with a thousand food poisoning germs on them. However, you can take a mush bar that you've created and fry it up to make mush fry. And mush fry will have no germs on it. Because once it's fried on the grill, no germs left. That's really an emergency food source, though. It saved my bacon a couple of times, but by and large, you won't have to worry about that too much unless you make mistakes. Oh, I should point out this water save is running one of those uh, infinite water recycling loops. So it's recycling p polluted water out of the toilets and sinks. It's taking that polluted water and sieving it and sending it back in. That's why the dirt coming out of this is absolutely covered in food poisoning germs, and it's pretty toxic. Now, next up, accidents. Accidents are going to happen, and duplicates will make messes. And when they do, it could, can end up in your clean water supply. This, of course, was not an accident. Though, don't tell anyone. Anyhow, this uh, polluted water that comes out of them is going to have food poisoning germs in it. Those food poisoning germs will spread quite happily into the surrounding water. Now, food poisoning germs can't survive in water. They will die off. They die very, very slowly, though. So it will take a long time for all these food poisoning germs to go away. It's going to be quite frustrating. However, you can get rid of the blobs of water that do get in here by just doing a mop command. Duplicants can come down and actually mop those drops of water from the bottom of the tank. No big deal. And there we go. Problem solved. Now we just have to wait until all the food poisoning germs die out, which will be a long, long time. It does take quite a while. Which brings us to the water cooler. So as you can see, water cooler's got a bit of food poisoning germs in it. This is probably the most common way you'll end up getting uh, food poisoning germs into your dupes from clean water. You can disable the building. If you disable the building, it has absolutely no effect on the room bonus. This is still classified as a great hall, even though the recreational building is disabled. Duplicants won't stock it up with water, and no one will drink from it. Just a handy way to avoid problems if you do end up with germs in your clean water supply. Barring that, they do nothing. So long as you're not on any of these three foods, and so long as you've turned off your or, or disabled your water cooler, there's really no way this clean water can cause you any issues. But what happens if the blob of polluted water is so big that you can't actually mop it? For example, that pile there is... what? Ooh. That was a bad example. But this pile here is 1,000 kilos, and as such, it cannot be mopped. How do we deal with that? Very simple. We will just deconstruct this, and we're going to place a pitcher pump on top of it. That's all. So the duplicants produced polluted water, and that was way too quickly. Uh, this duplicant picked it up. If you look here on the pitcher pump, you can see it has available waters. Uh, water, 6.2. Polluted water, 814 kilos. So this pitcher pump can differentiate between the two liquids, and so can the duplicants. So they will only pull out the polluted water if I tell them to. So what I've done here is I've set up a bottle emptier way over here, and this bottle emptier is set to collect polluted water, and I've set it to enable auto bottle. So what, enable auto bottle is important. That means they will use a pitcher pump to get materials for it. Now this duplicant here has just picked up a bunch of germy water and they've got six food poisoning germs on them. Oh, it died off that quickly. Now watch when they drop off the polluted water. And now they've ended up with more food poisoning germs on them. That's just one of the ways this works. Anytime they pick up anything with germs on them, the germs will end up on them. So just be aware of that. I should really have sinks around here if I was going to set up something like that. But this does mean that my duplicants can, over time, take all the polluted water out of this and dump it off at the other side. Uh, another thing to be aware of when you're using those bottle emptiers, there is a limit to how many how many kilos can be dropped off of them. Bottle emptiers can only drop off 200 kilos at a time. So if you put down multiple bottle emptiers, then the duplicants should request the maximum carry capacity they have. Though this is early game, I doubt anyone has too much carry capacity. What's that? I think they took about... They carried 800 kilos. So that's 800 kilos of that germy water gone, and we're down to 14 kilos of polluted water. Perfect. Oh yes, they got hit with 10,000 food germs for doing that. Problem solved. 
that will get rid of all the polluted water out of the tank. Now we're back to a nice clean tank, except for the, of course, nasty food poisoning germs that are inside it. That's just one simple way to get rid of uh, polluted water or any liquids that have combined together and you end up with a blob you don't want. Just stick in a pitcher pump, siphon it out. As a quick side note, this is more when you're dealing with late game liquids like crude oil and petroleum, you're sometimes going to make mistakes and combine liquids. For example, here, here's a big tank of petroleum and there's a layer of clean water that ended up on top. Stuff like this is going to happen to you and you want to get rid of that because you know it's going to contaminate something at some point because it's going to get down to your liquid pump. Simple way to get rid of it, just get yourself some mesh tiles. And then just place a row of mesh tiles all the way across. Let me turn off that for a minute and then mop it. You can mop on top of mesh tiles. It's just a handy way to get rid of this. It's a thin layer of something instead of just a big blob. You can use that to usually mop it off. And now you're just down to a nice tank of petroleum. Problem solved. Did we get it all? Nope, two pieces left. As a quick final note on this, uh, here is polluted water full of food poisoning germs. It is absolutely toxic with them. In fact, some waste overflow from my toiletry system flows in here. Uh, that water is pumped down here into these liquid tanks. It then goes through these storage, uh, this storage water sieve, dumping out polluted dirt. And then it is sent over here, and it is sent through this electrolyzer setup. That's right, that, that water is just coming out absolutely covered in germs. If you look in here, you can see some germs in here. There's plenty in the air. Doesn't matter. All of that has been pumped into the base. Duplicants don't care. Base doesn't care. Nothing matters. The, the, the food poisoning germs in the air do almost nothing. Well, they do nothing, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you absolutely positively want to filter the water, there is ways you can do it. Or if you want to clean the germs of the water, you can do it, and it's not really that ba that hard. So here we have a very, very simple germ decontamination room. And when it comes to germ de decontamination, all you want is chlorine and then liquid or gas tanks, depending on what you're trying to decontaminate, usually liquids. Uh, if you see in the tank here, you'll see there's a bunch of germy polluted water. And if we check on the germs, they are dying about 100% a cycle because they are surrounded by chlorine. And you'll see they're rapidly plummeting. Now the joy of the liquid tank as well, or the liquid reservoir, is it contains 5 tons of water and when the game has to spit out 10 kilos of that water, because it spits it out at 10 kilos per second, it has to make a calculation. There's 510 kilo blobs, so how much of that, how much of the germs get issued with each blob of water that comes out? So it just divides the amount of germs by, well, 500 I suppose. And if the amount of germs is less than 1, then it doesn't put out any germs. So all you have to do is make sure that by the time the water gets from one side of this to the other, that there's less than 500 germs in the final tank. So as you'll see here, there's 50 germs left in this now, so none of the water coming out of here is going to have any germs in it. Not a chance. The minimum length you can make these is three tanks long. Three tanks will usually, de well, should in testing and theoretically decontaminate all the water by the time it gets to the end. However, you have to make sure all the tanks are full. So this all this automation is set up to do currently is make sure there's still water incoming. If there's still water in the pipe trying to get through, then it lets water keep flowing through. If there's no more liquid coming through to fill up the tank, it stops the water flowing out. That way you always have the full tanks there and they're always getting decontaminated completely. That's the whole point of the system. Now, how is the automation set up? It's the first attempt at explaining it sucked. I'll just do it spread out a bit so you can see exactly how it's working. Plumbing, plumbing. Uh, this is what it's going to look like. This is what the finished product will look like. One, two, liquid pipe, white connects to white, green connects to green, and then that continues on. So the polluted water comes in here, exits the other side, and then you will put an automation sensor here, liquid pipe element sensor on the second white bridge. And you will set that to polluted water. Now, what it looks like when you spread it out a bit. The white connects to white, the green connects to the green, and then that continues on. And that's the output there. Or input comes in this way, output goes out that way. Liquid pipe element sensor, and that goes on the second white bridge. And then we're going to... So what I've done here is just uh, brought in some polluted water from here. That's going to feed into the start of this. And I've had a drain put on the end of it so that water can pour down into this pit. At the same point, I've put in a liquid shutoff. That liquid shutoff is hooked up via automation, or will be in one second, to our liquid sensor. What we want to do here is we want to watch this go through in slow motion. What should happen is the water should come through here. It's going to hit the liquid filter. There'll only be one kilo of it at a second. As you can see, it flows through, but it can't get any further. The reason being that the system's not fully backed up. Imagine all these pipe segments are, you know, liquid tanks. And since it can't get through, the system's saying, nope, you can't keep going. 
So eventually what happens is it keeps backing up, backing up, backing up, and it's going to back up all the way to here. And once it backs up to here, the polluted water can't keep jumping across. And because it can't, it's going to pop down the overflow. And there we go. But the moment it hits that overflow, the element sensor detected the polluted water, sent on a non-signal, and said, yep, the system's now full, you can turn on. So it starts turning on. But now as this system starts to empty out, soon this water here can escape. And when it does, it turns it off again. That's, in theory, well, that's in basics exactly what we're doing up here. We're just not letting any water through unless we've got a backlog of water behind it to fill up the tank. This is just the compressed version of it. It's all of this just compressed down into a straight line. That's what we're using for the system. You can look up more online. There's plenty of builds out there for decontamination. Though in all fairness, it's not really that necessary. So long as you can, uh, if you're just electrolyzing it for oxygen, you don't care. And so long as you're not making three of the foods listed, the three foods and stuff like that, you don't really mind. I've been stockpiling polluted dirt for 122 cycles on this map, and yet I still haven't come close to filling one storage bin. You've got plenty of time to worry about the issue, so don't worry too much about uh, food poisoning germs. You can also build curative tablets for, I think it's a ton of water and a ton of coal, and that will cure any of your dupes that get, to get uh, food poisoning. But by and large, just take some minor precautions and it should just be uh, an occasional annoyance rather than a problem. Anyway, hope this was at least mildly informative for you and uh, good luck.